Hi everyone. I recently made a, a video in the Poison Pawn variation of the Winnower French, and I got to try it out here as white. So it's a blitz game. And that's the Winnower, bishop b4. So I played e5. And now uh, the usual move is c5, but my opponent played knight e7. But we soon transposed back to the main line here after c5. Now queen g4 begins the poisoned uh, pawn variation. Now the main line here is to castle kingside, uh, but a more fun tactical double-edged way of playing is the way my opponent played queen c7, uh, giving up some pawns on the kingside. So queen takes g7, rook g8, queen takes h7. So getting a couple pawns, but black's going to get some counterplay um, on the queen side here. C takes d4, that's a threat to play queen takes c3 check, winning the rook on a1. So knight e2 to guard c3. Knight bc6, that's a threat to win the e5 pawn. Now I played f4, that's the main move, the main line to guard e5. Notice if you take uh, on d4 with the pawn, that's a mistake because black can take that pawn and uh, then your e-pawn is weak and you cannot take that knight because that fork comes. So that's why we play um, f4 in that position. Now d takes c3 was played. That's, a, that's the first move I didn't know. Uh, I didn't uh, study that particular line, but if I look at the database here, there are two main moves played, two, only two moves played out of, you know, 1,500 games here. Um, and I studied the move bishop to d7, talked about that in my video. Um, but d takes c3, looks like a good move too. And uh, I didn't want to take back with the knight because I was afraid of knight takes e5 with a discovery on my knight here. So I brought my queen back to d3 to attack c3 again and get my queen back into the game off of that h file. And then my opponent pushed his um, d-pawn forward. So he wants to give up his d-pawn instead of his c-pawn. And that is the main move. That's what people play in that line. It looks a little strange to me to give up that uh, strong center pawn on d5 instead of this c-pawn over here. But my opponent's going to castle kingside. Maybe he wants an open file for his rook. So I take the pawn. He takes back. I take back. And if we look at the uh, database again, we're, we're pretty much following um, hundreds of games here, a couple hundred games. Um, and the move to play here is bishop d7. You need to develop that bishop and castle queenside in a hurry. Um, and my opponent uh, made a mistake and played knight to f5. And the reason that's a mistake is because it leaves this diagonal open to the king, and I can call uh, check here. And I have two pieces pointed at d7. So my opponent moved his king out of the way, uh, just to point out what would have happened if he had blocked. Well, I would have traded a couple of pieces here and then probably played king to f2 to card g2 and I'm just up a solid pawn, and black really has no counterplay. And I can push this pawn and get my bishop to a3. I can get a rook to d1 with a check. I have a passed h pawn. Or I can get the other rook to d1 and keep my rook behind my passed pawn. So it should be a pretty easy ending a pawn up. Although, of course, anything can happen in a blitz game. So we didn't go for those trades. Uh, my opponent played king e7. And then I played queen b4 check. So it forces him right back to the d file. All right, and here I needed a plan to attack further, and I wanted to get a rook to d1 to check him. Now that would be devastating unless he prepares for it. And I can't get the a1 rook to d1 very easily. There's no good spot for my bishop to move to right now. So I decided to castle to get the other rook here. And I had looked at the move queen to b6 check before castling, and I thought it was safe to move my king into the corner. But apparently it's not. 
So queen b6 check came, and the engine tells me the only move here is rook to f2, and I still hold an advantage after rook to f2. But I blunder horribly with king to h1, and that gives my opponent a checkmate in two. Okay, maybe pause the video and try to find the mate in two. Okay, the mate in two that my opponent missed was knight to g3 check. Can't move my king. I have to take the knight, and then rook to h8 is mate. Okay, so luckily um, he missed that mate and dropped his knight back. Now, that's a defensive move. The point is he wants to put the knight on d5 to block a rook check. So I decided I need another plan besides putting a rook on d1. And the engine tells me a good plan here that I could have went for was bishop to e3, just developing. And the point is he cannot take that because there's a mate in two here. Oops, so mate in two on d7. So he'd have to move the queen away somewhere, and then I can continue developing. I can push to f5. He doesn't want to take that pawn because that pawn was anchoring his knight on d5 against a check. And I can just continue to develop, and he's stuck. All right, but I didn't go for that plan. Instead, uh, I pushed to a4, and my idea was to put my bishop on a3 and uh, get a battery against the e7 square. Um, I realized that um, I just unguarded my queen, and he can attack my bishop, but, you know, I can respond with bishop to a3. And that's what he does, and I responded with bishop to a3, which is a good move. Engine gives it plus 3.5, but it suggests even better is this move again, because it can't be taken, and uh, apparently uh, this might happen. Queen would go there. Um, I can put a rook here called check, force the knight to block, and then I can push this pawn, and there's really no stopping bishop to b6 with a, with a, a pin of the queen here to the king. But my plan still um, holds an advantage, bishop to a3, uh, knight to d5, so he's guarding that square now on e7. So I pin the knight instead of moving my queen away, and then bishop to d7, and this allows a, a strong um, exchange sacrifice. I take the knight, pin his bishop, he takes back, and then I get this check in. So he's, he's lost here. There's no defense. He moves his king over. And I had to decide which piece to take his bishop on d7 with. And uh, I analyzed that I want my queen to stay on that dark diagonal. And you'll see why. So check. He moves over. Check with my other bishop. Forces him to a7. And then I pin his queen. And that's why I wanted to keep my queen there to protect that. So he loses his queen, and soon the game. Okay, that speeds things up. It gives me a nice diagonal for my bishop. Okay, so I threaten a mate on b7. He guards it. Um, I call check to um, keep that pawn stuck there. And then I attack it with my bishop, and he resigns. I've got a couple mate threats, like queen takes a6 would be an immediate mate. Um, or bishop takes b7, rook takes b7, queen takes b7. Can't guard against them all. All right, thanks for watching the video.